one of the key ideas behind this is that the amplitude of the light can match the amplitude of the music behind it. Hi everybody, my name is Trey. This is a new time-lapse tutorial that I've just put together. It's based on this video I released recently called 30 Days and 30 Nights in Queenstown, where I tried a few new things. Now, I was able to compress this entire tutorial into three minutes. It's super high speed, it's fast paced, I talk super fast. Normally, my videos are very slow paced. Okay? I put a lot of tutorials over on stuckincustoms.com and I don't assume that you know anything. Uh, I don't want everyone to understand what's going, so I normally go much slower. But in this case, I assume you have some kind of a priori knowledge about time-lapse photography, so I just kind of cut to the quick of it all. I show my workflow, I show plugins, and that sort of thing, so enjoy. All right, let's do this thing. So you're going to end up with a lot of files, and I mean a lot. You're going to have these XMP files, which are sidecar files that contain all the metadata that will be going back and forth between LR time-lapse and Lightroom. They stay with your photos no matter what. So you see there I'm using Trey's Lightroom presets. They help add these filters that you might enjoy. I recommend them heartily. Now, here's LR Time Lapse. You'll be spending an ample amount of time in here. LR Time Lapse is a program that helps you smoothly extrapolate light to dark areas. And it keeps track of all the metadata for you and does the math so that you don't have these flicker problems that commonly plague time lapse situations. One of the first things you want to do inside here is make sure that you set up your keyframes. Often it's the beginning and the end, but you can also have keyframes in the middle if you want to have some crazy gradient extrapolations, which I did in about half of the sequences here. So when you jump back into Lightroom, you want to make sure that you go read all the metadata from the files that you just saved from LR time lapse. You're going to be going back and forth a lot, moving metadata back and forth between these two programs. So this progress bar is something you're going to get used to seeing. Okay, let's change the sorting here to rated so that we just see the keyframes that came out of LR time lapse. Now you'll want to go ahead and set up your filter so that they look good. You'll want to save all your metadata, jump back into LR time lapse, reload the metadata, then hit auto keyframes down there. That'll do the extrapolation between all the various gradients and other light levels that you chose. You can scroll back and forth to make sure that everything did change. Then click save again. Now we're back in Lightroom. In Lightroom, select everything. Then you'll want to go in here and then reload the metadata. This brings in all the extrapolated information. Then go up here to develop. You want to set it to 16 by 9 because that's one of the coolest aspect ratios, isn't it? Set your crop and then hit enter. Okay, now sync that cropping across all your other photos. So go into synchronize settings, uncheck everything because you don't want the other metadata moving across, just the cropping data. So make sure that's checked. Then go into slideshow because you need to export this under the right format. So pick 29.967 or whatever you like. Then it will create a movie file for you unless Lightroom crashes and you'll die a little death. And then you get this Adobe Placebo dialog, which I never use because I don't think it ever does anything. Oh, one other thing you might want to do is go in and fix all your little spots and also go adjust any of your gradients if you want to make them your own. But wait, there's more. There's lots more. This is Vital Cut Pro. You'll be spending a lot of time in here, too. Do you see every one of those little dots along the bottom? Every one of those little dots is a point where the music has a beat. I always get sucked into watching that even though I made the thing. So one of the great plugins that I use for this is called Twixter. You want to make sure that you start up the Twixter server so that you can actually use the Twixter plugin inside. Twixter lets you slow stuff down and do some awesome stuff. There's a lot to it, but just trust me, it's awesome sauce. Another great plugin I used and I highly recommend is this one. You probably noticed it in several of the scenes. It's called Magic Bullet Looks and it is awesome.com. And once you're inside, you can edit everything. You can go in and change all the color grading options. You can change some of the effects. You can bend all the colors to your will. It's all yours to explore. I have a full review on stuckincustoms.com if you want to find out anything else. All right. Well, that is what I did in a nutshell. Hope it helps. See you on the flip side.